my name is Michael and it's been quite some time since I made a video but today we're gonna talk about Capture One again and especially about the differences between Capture One and Lightroom and especially regarding well layers and uh, there are no layers in Lightroom right and I want to show you how I edited this image on the right to look like the image on the left and I want to show you exactly how it's done and I want to show you how to use the layers feature in Capture One to get this kind of result. Let's get into it. So the image that we're gonna edit here has been shot on the Fuji X-T30 on the 10 to 24 lens which is currently my new favorite lens i love to use it and um it's been about two weeks um in which i had the opportunity to work with the xt30 for a workshop that i made for fujifilm in lisbon so let's have a look at the image uh, quality the sharpness and and so forth we are at 200 percent right now so we're going to zoom back out again and uh, let's talk about the things that i would like to do in this image now first of all the building on the left side has the same color as my subject now that will distract some of the attention um, to the left side which is not good and um, i don't see enough detail in the sky and I want to make the street darker. These are the main things and obviously there is a lot of graffiti on the walls and to be honest they can be removed obviously but this is something that would probably need to be done in Photoshop and it would take a lot of time. So we're not going to do this but we're going to edit the image right now i'm going to show you the tools that i use to do that now if i want to change the color of the yellow building on the left i cannot do it with the color um the color editor because i would also change the color of this streetcar right here so what I want to do is anyway I want to go into the advanced color editor select the yellow of the building and then I want to press these three buttons right here and create a masked layer now this will take some time but with this layer I am now able to to mask this area. So let's go into the, um, close some things first <laughs> to get a better um, overview of what's happening. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go into the layers and have a look at the mask that was created by Capture One. Now I wanna erase the areas that I don't want to edit right now so for that reason I'm gonna adjust my brush size and work my way to a mask that will only work on the left side of the image and I would always prefer to work on a, a Wacom tablet to do masking but um, currently I'm just on my MacBook and I'm gonna do it with my touchpad which is working fine because Capture One has quite some good auto masking features that will um, correct my drawing um, automatically so let's have a look at my tool again to see yeah my opacity has not been on 100% so that's why I will need to work here one more time to get all the masking out of its out of the way
and now I'm gonna go into the uh, color editor one more time select the building and now I can change the hue of the color and the saturation and what I want to do is I want to match the color of the building on the right side just to get an even look and to, to get the attention of the viewer towards the middle of the image. So I'm going to have to reduce the lightness a little bit. The hue is not absolutely correct. I'm going to have to find the right spot. But you know this is taking some time. But I think we're pretty close. So this is going to be enough for right now. So. I have this layer that will change the building on the left side. So I'm gonna give this layer a name. And now we're gonna add a layer which will um, darken the sky. And there are many ways to do it. For me, I'm gonna just add a layer, press G on the keyboard. And I'm going to draw a gradient mask. By the way, if you press M, um, Capture One will show you what this mask looks like. And I'm going to adjust it to affect the sky. And you know now it will also affect the buildings. So first of all, we're going to change the exposure there to see what we're doing. Add some contrast. Maybe not that much. And now I'm going to use the Erase tool one more time. Just to show you what I'm doing, I'm going to press M again so we can see the mask. And now I'm going to erase the mask from the building. And you can see that I in unintentionally hit some areas here in the sky. And the auto masking is going to repair that just automatically. <laughs> so I'm gonna work my way here and you can see that it is not perfect but auto masking will do its job and help me create a good mask that is not causing any problems. And what we can also do is use the refine mask tool just to fine-tune our masking, that's always a good idea to try that and to see if it improves the mask, which it usually does. I'm going to press apply. And now the little um, yeah, edges that we had here on the roof are gone. So I'm going to name this sky. So as you can see, it has darkened the sky and well, there seems to be a little bit of mask left here on the building. Just gonna erase that and now we're good. So let's work on the background a little bit just to get the exposure right. Add some contrast, add some saturation just to make this image pop a little bit and I always like to play with clarity and structure. And the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna add a layer, another one, call it street, use the brush tool now, select a decent size, turn down the exposure and saturation and now we're gonna paint in this street. Maybe that's a little bit too much, but we're, we can change that whenever we like. That's the good thing. But the good thing right now is that we can see where we're painting. I like to work that way. So I can then see if everything is good. Use the erase tool one more time. Make it smaller. And just take my time to create a good mask because you know in the end everything comes down to the quality of the mask that you created.
But you know, for demonstration purposes of this video, I'm pretty fine with this mask. So I'm going to show you what the street layer looks like. It looks like this. And um, obviously there would need to be done some fine tuning. And I'm going to do it just, just to show you that we need to do a precise job. And uh, it's not that it will take very long. All right, now I'm happy with the mask and uh, I keep repeating myself, but it's really important to create a good mask and to see if they're, if the edges are clean and um, everything is smooth because if you do your adjustments on that mask and um, especially if you like, like me, I, I turned down the exposure by one and a half stops, which is quite a lot, um, you will see unwanted artifacts and that's not what we're looking for so if i would now disable all of the layers it will look like this if i would now show you the before and after it would look like this this is the way it was in the beginning and that's where we are right now that's the way it is so we can now work on our on the yellow one more time just to get something more out of the colors increase the saturation a little bit maybe also increase contrast darken the sky one more time the beautiful thing is that we can now select everything separately. Building left, street, sky, background, and we could even create a, a, a separate layer with just the street car. Let's do this. Use a radial gradient tool for that. Call this one car. And um, whatever we do now, I'm going to have to um, invert the mask. Whatever we do now will only be applied to the car. So let's add some contrast just to make this one pop a little more. Add some more saturation. Yeah, I think this was pretty, pretty helpful to enhance the image. What I'm going to do now is just remove a little bit of the mask up here. Just to show you what I'm doing, I'm going to show you the mask one more time. Erase a little bit just around. I mean, there are many other ways to do that. And I could have also painted just the area that I want, but you know, that's the way it goes sometimes. So this is too much, obviously. Let me just go here. And as you can see, you just need to play around. You can do a lot of things in Capture One that you cannot do in uh, Adobe Lightroom. This is a creative process. Um, when taking photos, you shouldn't be too concerned about your post-production process. You should be more concerned about the photography itself. A good image consists of great photography that happens mostly outdoors and maybe some or maybe a lot of post-production. It depends on the image, but it's not only post-production. So as you can see, just with the masking of this uh, street and with the car, um, there are many different ways to get to, to your results. So stay open-minded, try different tools, try the technical features that the camera and the software offers you and try to find your voice in photography you know that's that sounds weird but you will learn that over time you will do 
things over and over again in the same way. And that's a good thing, actually. So um, people will recognize your work because it has been done the way you do it. And that's where you need to go. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial and I hope you learned something. Um, I appreciate your feedback in the comments and in the next videos I'm going to show you some more images that I edited in Capture One uh, from Iceland. Hope to see you there. See you soon. Bye.